Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we're going to go over, not right now, but this morning, the homework that you were given last night, one of which was your obituary, uh, and two of which was the list of the no good fucks that you talk to every day, um, or weekly. And the, uh, we will prove some uh, rather interesting uh, stats. And basically, I'm here to tell you that uh, virtually all of you, with maybe one exception, 95% of the people that you talk to, if you never talk to them again in the rest of your life, it wouldn't make a difference. 95. For those of you that are really energetic and work courses, yada yada, maybe 75. And, uh, and then when you correlate that to how little or how much you've accomplished in your life, it's um, staggering. It's not such a hard thing to understand why you haven't accomplished so much. And uh, part of that has been the political correctness of uh, listening, giving tacit approval when people talk to you, instead of just saying piss off. Not piss off like that, but I mean, you know, uh, thank you very much, but I'm not interested. Um, and I mean, and when you compound that over a lifetime, even the successful people in the room are the more successful and the people that have made the most money. But when you compound that over a lifetime and you compare it to guys like Michael Milken, who worked 20 hours a day, 364 days a year, and you realize that he's accomplished from here to the gate and you've accomplished from the end of the table to here. If you and then compound it again with people that are smart doing that, then he's accomplished from here to the moon, and you've accomplished from here to here. Some people have to work hard, some people have to work smart, some people do both. But at the end of the day, if you don't work hard and you don't work smart, What's, what's, what's the end result? Lack of accomplishment, lack of success, lack of fulfilling your goals. And I mean, some of you um, stopped writing down goals when you were a kid. Um, later today, I'm going to go over my affirmations, as I told Ricardo yesterday. I uh, went over them last night. Um, and Alistair Cook, I said yesterday, Alistair Cook. Uh, the famous uh, broadcaster from BBC from many years ago used to say being a professional is doing the best work even when you don't feel like it. Last night I didn't feel like doing the operations. <coughs> Not every night I feel like doing my affirmations. But when I was at your stage of your career, I did the affirmations two or three times a day. And I can assure you I didn't like doing my affirmations two or three times a day any time, um, and uh, especially after you have some successes in life, and you have money, and you've got planes, and yachts, and stuff like that, you say, what the fuck? What am I doing my affirmations for? And then you could be gypsy, and just, I got bimbos with big tits sitting on my lap. I mean, I'm having a life of Riley. I'm in San Diego. I'm in Thailand. I'm in, eh. See? And he has a made dick. So it's very easy to get off track. And part of the reason it's so easy to get off track is because you hang around with people like yourselves. And I'm very unforgiving, as Marcus will tell you. I don't give a shit if he broke his leg, he broke his back, he had a fucking stroke. I don't give a shit. You know why I don't give a shit? Because life doesn't give a shit. He, he writes me, uh, work 17 hours today. I said, what are you, on fucking vacation? I think he had an 18 hour, 20 hour. No, I'm up 40 hours straight. So fucking what? Does he win an award? Do I give you an award when you're up 40 hours straight? No. 
No, I don't give him anything except a slap in the face. And I certainly don't high five him. I knew we had a super manager in Manila a couple years ago. I knew that I made a mistake the first day, but I said, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong about this guy. And then one of his managers, I said in on a manager's meeting, one of his managers was bragging about his team had had 100% attendance that week. That means he came to work. They came to work every day. Didn't say if they came to work late, like a gypsy Romanian. They came to work every day. And so when the manager walked by him, he stood up and he high-fived him. I fired him right then. Because I knew if that's all the fuck his expectations were because the cocksucker came to work every day, we had hired the wrong guy. And I hired him. But unlike you, I didn't have to think about it. Well, maybe I'm going to give him a second chance. Maybe the gypsy fucking bum, I'll give him a second chance. And then a third chance. Huh? And a fourth chance. And a fifth chance. And a sixth chance. I hope this isn't good thing for it. <laughs> For one chance and you're out. Because there are people who would be watching this. Okay. Um, we left off with um, our billionaire student, protege, mentee, on the, on, on the front of a Forbes magazine. Uh, the, um, you're a little fatter than I think. Yeah, yeah, you're a little fatter. Uh, the, um, she was, just look at the goddamn picture. I didn't say she was fat, I just said she's a little fatter. You see a little more stuff on her hips there. Um, it's not there now. <laughs> Stress will do that to you. Yeah. Stress will do that to you. Stress will do that to you. Uh, and um, whenever, you know, it's a sign in Asia, if you're overweight, it's, you're successful. <laughs> you're successful. So uh, when I was a lot bigger, uh, I must have been perceived to be very successful. Um, but, uh, and you see, you're in a meeting room with these uh, rich Asian guys, and they go like this a lot. You know, they kind of... They uh, pat their tummy because when they were young, they probably were starving to death and they were skinny, and so now that they've got enough to eat, uh, and so it's it, it's okay. Uh, any questions before we get started? Uh, from um, yes. Uh, does the thing goes on YouTube? Everything? We have to edit the gypsy blah blah blah. blah. No, we're not editing a fucking on anything. No, but we don't put it on YouTube because there will be some people watching, and if you want to put some blogs with whatever, uh, just to mock on people, that's not fair. I mean, we can keep the mocking in the room, please. No, you're wrong. We can't but keep it I in the goddamn room. We cannot put it everything on the internet. Hey, we can put anything I want to fucking put on the internet, so shut the fuck up. Okay, I'll put anything on the internet. Yeah, well, I don't give a fuck with you. And if I don't like what you put on the internet while you're here, I'll throw you out of the fucking castle. And if you think I'm kidding, try me. I know, okay. Fucking try me. And if you don't like it, get out now. But, I mean, it's not... I don't give a fuck. You understand me? Don't piss me off. You're in no position to piss me off. Okay. Okay, we left off with our billionaire on the front of Forbes magazine and the homework. But let's go to some more slides and then we will. Where's my clicker? There it is, Dan, right next to the whip. Oh, right next to the whip. Okay. When I was growing up, I certainly didn't say this, but I certainly did think it, because I didn't know any different. All I knew is that everybody around me was poor. Some of you may have had the opportunity to be around people that were wealthy. I certainly didn't. For those of you that saw people that were wealthy, you had a different perspective of life. You had a different perception. I didn't. I think I told you earlier that I didn't know how many zeros was in a billion dollars until I got to be an adult. Blessed are those who expect nothing, for they shall not be disappointed. When we're growing up, and we come from an environment like I came from, we didn't expect much in life. I didn't expect much in life. My dad's only goal for me in life, and you've heard me say this before, is for me to stay alive until I hit the age of reason. In my particular case, the age of reason didn't come until I was in my 30s, because the last time that I was... Um, 
uh, arrested for doing something not good uh, was February 10th, uh, 1977, and it was uh, just before my 32nd birthday, if I if got my math correct. If you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. That's why affirmations, daily affirmations, and affirmations more than one, once a day are so very important. They're so very important because it keeps you on track. And that's why people that give me daily reports are more on track than people that give me weekly reports. Now, everybody doesn't have to give daily and weekly reports. Sally PH. Doesn't have, hmm, let me turn that off. I guess I didn't. Um, doesn't have to have daily uh, and uh, weekly reports. Because if you know how to stay on track and you know how to stay focused, then you don't need that. But my experience in 40 plus years is that most people don't know how to stay on track. They don't know how to stay on track. If people were in the Army or in the Marine Corps or in the services could keep on track, they wouldn't have to have corporals. They wouldn't have to have sergeants. They wouldn't have to have squad leaders. They wouldn't have to have all these people to nudge them along. And they don't nudge them along in such a politically correct way. Although the military is much more politically correct than when I was in it. We, we talked about yesterday the Navy SEALs now take time off, which is hard for me to believe. But uh, if you look at YouTube, they do. Um, and now you can't scream at people. You can't do things. And the politically correct person would say that I shouldn't have screamed at Chip. But I'm not politically correct, so I don't want to give a shit. The point is that people like Jobs that we've already talked about, etc., showed their emotion to make points. And showed their emotion because it, they care about what they were doing. Most people that you've dealt with in your business careers, in your personal life, don't show much emotion because the, the truth of the matter is they really don't care. I care about what I do and I care about the results I get. And I care about being 100% candid and I care about being um, forthright as I can and not, and not hiding any bullshit. Not hiding any bullshit. Intellectualization is the most reliable of the defenses. Freud. We intellectualize. We talked about making excuses yesterday. We all make excuses, myself included. I make excuses that um, why some of the things I try to accomplish and I failed. Remember what we were talking about yesterday? The things that I, did, I regret aren't the things that I did wrong. They're the things that I made a bad choice. Instead of picking you, I picked him. Or instead of picking him, I picked you. And that's where most of my regrets are. My regrets aren't because I didn't have the intestinal fortitude or the balls or the chutzpah or whatever of trying something. I, that was never my problem. Most of you, that's your problem because of who you were trained by, who gave you your input, etc., etc. So if I can just bring you an inch, a foot, closer to the mind of the continuum, you'll be more successful because you'll be more assertive. And the one thing that you're going to see, if you haven't already seen it, the high-performance people are all significantly more assertive than you are. You asked me a question last night, Robert. Uh, Bavarian Bob, as I like to call him, even though he doesn't like Bob. Um, how do I get closer to a 94.6% closing ratio in sales? Because that used to be my closing ratio. And I said, only by hanging around people that know how to close and know how to sell. And I've done it time and time and time and time again. You certainly can't do it sitting around with people that don't have to close. Now, people that, have, that sell, that have to earn money and, have to, and, and feel obligated to themselves or it's incumbent upon themselves to be successful, are more assertive. If you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth, and I don't know if any of you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth or a gold spoon in your mouth, except for this Robert. He's the closest with two cars as a young teenager. Um, the, um, you have less incentive to be assertive, because you've already got what you want and you're already in your comfort zone. Time is the best teacher. Unfortunately, it kills all of us because it takes a long time. This is the three to five to seven year plan to be built success and build an inordinate network. As Stuart Goldsmith, who wrote the first uh, forward to my first book, said, time is the best teacher. 
but you get old and you can't accomplish enough or accomplish as much as you would like. Now, I said yesterday, the oldest in the room is close to 60, around 60. The youngest in the room is almost 30. So you've been around 263,000 hours to 526,000 hours. This 60 hours can change you. But when you think of just the magnitude, the quantum of hours that you've been around, it doesn't seem like 60 hours can affect 260,000 hours. Or 60 uh, hours can affect 526,000 hours. But it can. And I've seen it, and it does. We've had some extremely dramatic changes here. I used to sponsor a scholarship at the University of Texas in the, in the name of my partner, former partner who's passed away, Charlie Soliday. And it was a Charlie Soliday scholarship at the University of Texas. And every year they would get together and they would have teams from all over the world compete against other universities all over the world uh, for the best uh, uh, business project. And the winner of the business project, in addition to getting money, got to come to the Castle Seminar on me. I flew him here, etc., etc., for a week. So the, the two or three years that I did it, two of the two or three years that I did it, the team were three or four people in the team. So not only did I have to fly one person, I had to fly three or four people. And one of the team members of the team from Australia that won was a young girl. She was the youngest MBA CPA lawyer in Australia. She was 22 or 23. And her father was the second biggest construction magnet, big guy, in Australia. But she didn't want to go into his business. She wanted to build a competing business. And she was there. And uh, she sent, I believe, she, uh, if I remember correctly, she sent her brother, who was a couple years younger, a few years later, to come to the seminar. And the last time I heard, uh, this was in the 90s, last time I heard, um, she and her brother had taken over the construction company and either convinced their father to retire or pushed him out. I don't know which. Uh, knowing her little personality, as strong as he was, I think it was they pushed him out. But I don't know that for a fact. But she was only here 60 hours. And of course, she was, you know, she probably only had 225,000 hours of life. But almost all of these hours of conditioning are not appropriate or apropos to achieving big, quantum, bodacious goals. 